it was Oso. He was the first dog who got me thinking, so what if I didn't want to keep Oso? He wasn't going to find a home with anyone else, and he'd be put down. So 100 dogs became 200 dogs, and then 300 dogs, and, and then all of a sudden we thought, okay, so how can you stop helping them? There's so many out there. To me, and I hope to them, it's their little mountain where nobody's gonna hurt them again, and, and where if they're lucky, they might find a home. A saguate, or a mutt, is the product of a survivor with a survivor. Not that I think breed dogs or not. I mean, any dog, any animal is beautiful. But if a mutt gets to survive past his first months of life on the street, he's pretty much bulletproof. And Costa Rica has a serious problem with strays. We have about two million dogs on the streets, but the streets are not home to anyone. Te dijo qué tamaño es el perrito. Hay fotos del perrito. Pues te cuento, a mí siempre me 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 gustaron los 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 animalitos, pero realmente el alma de esto es Lee. Hubiéramos traído como algo para recogerlo. Aquí anda una cuerda, mami. Pero no, pero algo como como. Ah, una matita, ahorita hago la vuelta. Y está, está, está que se puede, sí se puede levantar. Ah, ya veo. Es que otros ojos bonitos. Cuando cuando nosotros lo vimos, se trata como levantar, pero la patita no le da. Seguramente está quebrada. O la cadera. Para que no se escapara, porque está increíble ¿Cómo es posible? Qué velocidad van a ir aquí, hombre. ¿Cómo va a ser posible? O sea, paró, dice mi papá que no paró, le gritó él, era solo no mal, ya casi no quiso parar el viejo. Llegó un momento en que empezó a rescatar perros de la calle, sin la idea de darlos en adopción, sino curarlos y quitarle todas las cositas malas que tenían. Y llegamos a tener 183 perros en la casa. Entonces, ya en ese momento sí era súper problemático con los vecinos y todo. Y entonces decidimos ya hacer esto en territorio. Pero nunca se armó pensando vamos a hacer un refugio de perros. Nunca. It has to start with children. Children have to grow up knowing the good and the bad. I mean, how to treat an animal properly, that's a nice part how to consider it part of your family and not an object, and also what happens if you don't. But people still need a little bit of coaching there, and it can happen, but it has to happen from school. It has to be taught to kids, and kids will teach their parents. <laughs> Tenía un sapo de mascota, era un sapo como de ese tamaño. Y tenía conejos, y tenía perros, y tenía de todo. Y está convencida que su abuelo, eh, Diógenes Bonilla, que fue la persona que era la dueña de esta propiedad, amaba a los animales. Entonces ella es, dice, esta herencia de mi abuelo, creo que el mejor uso que le puedo dar es, en honor a él, que esté llena de animalitos. Pues Nico. I'll get her. I'll get her bag. Bueno, yeah. What else? Since we don't euthanize a dog for any reason at all, some of our dogs needed therapy. We had dogs that would come to us dragging their back legs because they had been hit by a car months ago, and a few sessions of therapy, and in a month they were wobbling and walking and then strong enough to get their muscles back and it's wonderful. Dogs in general are so resilient. Um, they're so much braver than we are and they, they take hell with such class. 
little dogs I've seen, or the dogs that get, that lose part of their ability to function, have to make up with personality. And they do. And so you see little wiener dogs, little Dachshunds. They, they, they have weak backs, and it happens a lot. And you see them, and they're happy, and they feel no self-pity. They just feel it's another challenge. And dogs function on challenges. And you see them, I mean, don't go past this point. And they'll try to go past this point. Don't eat that, and they'll try to eat that. Don't survive, and they will survive. Bueno, el, el tema de la comida es la parte más complicada que hay. Y la parte elemental para poderle dar de comer a esta cantidad de perros es que nunca puedes empezar a servir por pedazos la comida. So now we just have the longest troughs. We place, we strategically place the sacks. The guys stand there. It's like, it's like a ceremony. And then they all come and they start getting in and shouldering their way in. And, and some of them will lie on top of the food. And we have, so we do have to patrol behind them. But basically that's the, that's a routine. It comes full circle because we feed them and then we have these really sturdy sacks left over. So what we do is we collect the, the poop <laughs> during the day and we, we fill the sacks. And then the sacks are placed in special bins that are later collected by, they're collected by um, a company that specializes in sort of composting, that sort of thing. So it's not like they sort of toss it in the river. At least some of my proudest moments are when I can see dogs walking and running around here that were either dogs that were supposed to be put down for whatever reason or, or really weren't supposed to survive. We have, and that, that for that we have to thank our, our vets. Territorio representa muchas cosas. Representa todo lo que una persona puede hacer para cambiar el mundo, pero al mismo tiempo, y muy tristemente, representa lo mal que estamos en Costa Rica con respecto a la tenencia responsable de mascotas. Es un lugar donde llegan todos los casos que las otras personas completamente voltearon su cara. When you get into this, into rescuing animals, you come into contact with the lowest, lowest form of humanity very often. But even if it's very few sparks compared to very big blotches of darkness, it, they're enough. They're enough to make it worth it. Entonces, Es una combinación de sentimientos, sentimientos muy buenos cuando logramos excelentes resultados y sentimientos muy tristes cuando vemos lo que un humano puede hacerle a una mascota, lo que un humano puede hacerle a un ser que no se puede defender. A lot of the dogs that we have here are all messed up. They've had a hard life and they live on a farm and they get wet and dirty and muggy and but they're happy they've healed the inside and that sometimes that's the hardest part to heal think of human beings I mean 
no matter how much makeup you put on, if you're sad, if you're you've got a broken heart, it's not gonna it's not gonna go away with makeup. Every dog becomes your baby, and um, at the beginning it was harder, but then after years of watching these dogs who have had so much fun here just gravitate towards people when there's a public walk, you understand that they all want a home. So when somebody takes them, that the bittersweet part of, of, of letting go, the bitter part is gone. It's like, I'm trusting this person with what I think this dog wants, and I think they all want homes. It's not how many times you're happy, it's how deeply happy you can be. And I don't think I could be happy turning my back on them. Sometimes they, I get asked, why do you keep doing it? You know, because somebody has to take over. Somebody has to learn that it is possible to give this to dogs, to have dogs that don't have homes and not have them caged in and sentenced to a death if they're not adopted. If I could do this, imagine a government with funding. They deserve at least this, at least as much. And if, if we can't stop them from being born, well, God, then guarantee them some happiness and, and a future that doesn't involve cages. So I can't stop. I can't.